process for writing the book, the oh my writing process. Okay. Um Okay. Well, I will tell you this. I thought about doing this book several years before it came out and as an agent or just having a full-time job, I think it's very difficult sometimes to find the ideal time to write. And you know, the writing of the the writing of that book, it was almost like I had to use a different side of my brain. So it was hard for me even if I did have time during the day to spend an hour or so writing. I just wasn't in the right headspace for it. I was in the in the headspace of, okay, I need to call this author, I mean, sorry, I need to call this author and tell them about the fact that we just got picked up in a foreign, foreign rights have been picked up, or I need to get in t contact with um, an editor and let them know that I'm sending them a manuscript. It was, it's a totally different headspace. So the idea of, of writing during the day was, was tough. Um, I live in New York, and during the weekends and even sometimes at night, I would drive into the city and sit at Battery Park, and that's where I would write. And there's also a Four Seasons down there, or maybe it's a Ritz. It's either a Ritz-Carlton or a Four Seasons down by Battery Park. And I would um, go into Battery Park and into the sorry into the Four Seasons, and I would write in the hotel. And in fact, I became really good friends with the bartender there, and <laughs> he would always say, "Oh, you're back. What are you working on today?" And I'm like, "Same old thing. I'm working on this book." So I found that I had to kind of get out of the office, get out of my apartment and kind of into a, a totally different space and libraries were a little too quiet for me okay the question is um, will you represent a picture book author if not also the illustrator I don't know what that exactly means are you looking for any specific picture book topics or themes? And do you feel any are overdone? Well, you know, I just got a call about uh, maybe two months ago. And at Bloomsbury, they have this new series called Animal Tales. And I was really excited about that because I used to get a lot of picture book uh, manuscripts that were... Um, specifically about animals and people were saying oh it's too much too much we're not doing picture book um, animal picture books that are focused on animals so I see that theme coming back around and um, so I'm looking for um, animal tales and that's that is um, if you go to Bloomsbury site I, I believe they have the specifications for what they're looking for in those picture books those picture book categories uh, so if you you're looking to do one of those, check those, check them out, or you can always email me and I can send you the spe uh, specifics of what the the specifications for that series are. Let's see what else. Um, picture book themes, picture book themes. Well, I'll tell you in the picture book market, um, if you're going to do, if think about parents and the fact that the economy is really tough right now and the typical picture book is about 18 bucks and, and some of them are even more expensive than that so if you're you're going to be working on a picture book think about whether or not if you were a mother if you and you didn't have you know a lot of disposable cash if you would go into the bookstore and buy that book so there are a lot of ideas that are kind of that are good but I'm looking for things that are great, that are just calling you as a mother or a grandmother to go out and spend that 20 bucks for a book. So I always, I always ask my authors to think about that. Like, would you spend that 20 bucks for a book? So what's the question about the illustrator? Okay. 
okay, what are some good resources for an author who is at a stage where they feel like they're they need to revamp their query and what are your query do's and don'ts? Uh, I am going to give a plug to Chuck Sambacino, who on his he's a part of Writer's Digest. I think they do an incredible job at helping you understand what should go in the query and what should not go into a query. And he has um, one of my friends, Catherine Sands, who's an agent. She has um, a thing called Querial, Querial Killers, um, and basically it's all those things in a query that annoy agents. And some of my query do's and don'ts. Query do. Please tell me the page count or the word count of your manuscript. I also like to make sure that the author has clearly to told me enough about them as an author, including if you have a platform. And I'll explain quickly what a platform is. Platform just shows that you are a credible person to write um, about that given topic and when you're talking about fiction a lot of times people say well with fiction you don't really need a, uh, a platform if you do have a platform it makes the agent much more interested in working with you even with fiction or nonfiction so if you have any kind of a platform and I'll give an example if if for um, if you're doing a book on a little girl who has a mother who has cancer. I just saw a project like that. If you have some kind of relationship with the American Cancer Society or the American Heart Association or some kind of association or organization by which you can contact them and ask them to buy copies of the book in bulk, you should put that in your query letter. You should put any kind of associations, organizations, um, or relationships that you have that tie into the saleability of your book. Of course, you also want to put in any kind of writing credits. That also um, identifies your platform as well. Uh, and, and the reason that I'm anxious about that is because it's a very, very saturated market out there, and anything that you can do to have an, a leg up on some of the other authors who might be writing in that same category it makes you much more appealing to the agent. And in terms of don'ts, hmm, don'ts, don'ts, don'ts. Well, I would say don't overwrite your query. Make sure that you're very, very clear about what each agent is looking for in, a, in their submission. If they tell you not to send the entire manuscript, don't send the entire manuscript. Um, for picture books, I like to see a query letter along with the entire manuscript. That's just for picture books. For middle grade and for YA, I like to see the typically the a query letter and maybe the first three chapters. But anybody who has participated in this um, this forum, if you're interested in sending me material, you can send me the entire manuscript, whether it be YA, middle grade, or a picture book, because, and just put the fact that you have, have participated in this conference, and I'll take a look at it and take you out of the slush. Any other questions? Okay, great. If any of you happen to have a copy of my book and you've had or you're going to buy the book, if you buy the book through Amazon, no, I'm sorry, if you go to Writer's Digest shop and buy the book from from there, I will send you an autographed copy of the book. And if you buy it through Amazon and you like the book, please, please, please put a um, review. Okay, thank you guys very, very much. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. I'm, I'm typing in my um, email, my direct email. Uh, this is where you can email me, 
and Writer's Digest Shop Writers. <laughs> Thousand Shades of Awesome, that's cute. Um, if you go there to Writer's Digest Shop, you can buy the book. Okay, thank you. Should I sign out now? Bye. <laughs> Bye. Jamie, thank you so much for helping me get everything set up. Appreciate that. And Jen. Thanks to Jen, too. <laughs>